Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're going to um, proceed with the webinar now. Um, so I'm just going to introduce myself for a little bit. I am um, Linda Chui. I've been teaching chemistry in New South Wales since 2010, and I am experienced with the current syllabus, um, assessment, marking, and writing. And today we are going to um, focus on a few things, mainly um, on the topic of titration. Um, we are going to focus on indicator range, um, acidic and basic salts, titration techniques, and um, mainly titration calculations. We are going to go through each one of these concepts thoroughly with some typical exam questions and how to approach them when you are stuck. Um, let me have a look. Okay. okay. So let's start with indicators. Um, the definition of an indicator um, is purely a substance that can change color um, when a concentration of hydronium ion in a solution does change. Now, this is a um, pH table that I have created. Um, usually, in main, uh, in most of your textbooks, you will be given um, sometimes um, a colored version of this or a black and white version of this indicating the pH range between 8.3 to 10 for phenolphthalein and 3.1 to 4.4 for methyl orange, 6.0 to um, 7.6 for bromothymol blue. These three indicators and their ranges have to be memorized and learned by heart because um, it will help you in determining what type of indicator you will be using when we are doing a titration. Now, in this particular chart, I've included some experimental result as well. So um, when you are using phenolphthalein in your titrations in your prax, what happens is that your teacher would want you to make sure your solution is like that, in this clear, really pure pink color. Um, if your color of your titrate is approaching to this um, magenta color, um, they would usually ask you to do your titration again because you're really overshooting. Because um, this is the range for the phenolphthalein to change color from a um, pure or clear color into a purple color. And if you're overshooting, you are really um, introducing more, hydro, um, more hydronium ion or the other way around into the solution, which may not be correct. Now, methyl orange, it's a little bit, um, um, the, experiment, the experimental result would be like this. However, in your HSC um, paper, what they would usually say is um, methyl orange is going to have a 3.1 to 4.4 range, which means that if your um, indicator is orange, um, it will show you that this solution will have a pH that is less than 3.1. And if your solution's color is yellow, um, your pH will be greater than pH would be greater than 4.4. Now, um, a lot of students um, are a bit unclear when they're writing um, their um, pH ranges or when they say, oh, if the pH is, uh, if the color of the solution is 4.4 under the indicator phenolphthalein, then my solution is more basic. That is not true because um, just because it is greater than 4.4, I have no idea whether the solution is actually between 4.4 to 12. So I can't simply say that it is basic. Now, bromothymol blue is an interesting one because um, experimental result-wise, um, when it is in this neutral range in your prac, you should see a green color. But in the syllabus, it doesn't actually specify that you know between 6.0 to 7.6, you will get the color green 
in your solution. Simply saying um, this particular indicator is going to allow you to test solutions within a neutral range, um, this in an acidic range and that in the basic range. Are there any questions so far? before we proceed into acidic and basic salts and practice some questions. Nope. Okay, let's move on. So let us do a question on um, this. So for question one, it says, um, a solution is yellow in bromothymol blue and methyl orange and colorless in phenolphthalein. What is the pH range for this solution? Now for a solution to be, ye um, to be yellow in bromothymol blue, I will know that it has to be um, less than, so this would be less than 6.0. For this solution to turn yellow in methyl orange, I'll also know that it will be less than 4.4. Oh, sorry, greater than 4.4, my apologies. So this would be, whoops, greater than 4.4. You get the idea, 4.4. And um, colorless in phenolphthalein, so this would be less than 8.3. So which one of these following would be the correct answer? Can you please write your answer in the chat, please? So I've got two students saying it is C. And the answer is C. Well done. The answer would be between whoops, um, between 4.4 to 6.0. Let's look at question two. Similar question. Um, well, this particular indicator chart may not be available to you depending on the type of um, multiple choice you'll be getting. So it's actually quite important for you to memorize the pH ranges. Um, but let's have a look at this question. 0.1 molar citric acid solution is neutralized with a solution of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. The best indicator for this titration would be any one of these ranges. Now, um, the importance um, in eliminating the, the incorrect answers in this question is we need to know that citric acid is a weak acid and we know that sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Just write acid over here. When you make salt with a strong base and a weak acid, what you will get is a salt that is in the basic range. So you will get a basic salt. Now, which one of these um, combination or which one of these indicators will give you a range within the basic range? Hi Amanda, um, so a lot of people can get on it's coming up with something wrong popping up for them. What does the message say? Specifically. There seems to be some technical issues. All right, we're just going to have a look at what is wrong. OK, 
Can people still hear me? Okay, thank you, Bianca. Okay, thanks, Victoria. All right, I'm going to continue now. For this particular question, can um, you tell me which one of these indicators will provide um, a color change within the basic range, please? So if you can, just put it there. Well done, it would be your um, phenolphthalein. Well done, ladies and gentlemen. It would be phenolphthalein. Okay, let's move on. In the table shows um, the color of three indicators at different hydrogen ion concentration. Um, for the first one, we've got um, 10 to the power of negative two molar, 10 to the power of negative four, 10 to the power of negative six with the um, color that each it's got. It says, what is the pH of a solution that shows the following indicator colors? We know that it is yellow within um, your methyl orange. So we know that that is our first um, indication. Bromyl thymol blue is green. And for our phenol red, it's red. So I know that this is going to be the concentration of hydronium ions within my solution. If you remember the formula for pH, pH is equal to negative log, the concentration of hydronium ion. So if you put this number into your calculator, you should be able to find the correct pH range. Um, can you please type the answer in the, um, in the chat box, please. Bianca, you just asked me a question. What will a mixture do? What do you mean by that? From the previous question, let me just go back, hang on. Oh, um, a mixture is going to give you a, um, a combination of these pH ranges. Um, and that is what a universal indicator is, is a mixture of various indicators combined into one. And that is the reason why it can change colors um, for the entire pH range. Does that make sense? Not just the two, but many. So the universal indicator would have at least five to six different indicators in the solution. So that's why we can actually use that test, the pH between zero to 12 qualitatively. No worries. Okay, let us move on to our um, salts. Now, um, why we are, before we look into acidic, basic and neutral salts, there are some important terminologies we have to understand. And the first one is dissociation. When anything dissociates, we are mainly talking about the um, separation of the ions within an ionic compound. So this is an example of that where we have um, PBBr2 turning into its associate ions. Ionization is a little bit different. It usually takes place in polar covalent molecules um, and it evolves, involves the formation of charged ions from the molecule where they were not um, ionic to begin with. So um, this is an example of an acid when the hydrochloric acid ionized, it turns into its associated ions, which is your hydrogen ion and your chloride ion. Hydrolysis is a term that you may or may not have come across with, but you should by now in chemistry. And that is the reaction of weak acids and bases with water as its solvents. So 
Um, and this is the reason why our um, pH of the salt is going to change. So I'm going to use these three words interchangeably when describing acidic, basic and neutral salts. OK, so when we're talking about acidic salts, um, I've given you an example of basic salts already, but with the acidic salt, um, it consists, an, um, consists of an iron of a strong acid and a cation of a weak base. So when we are looking at this as an example, so for example, this is your ammonium chloride. We know that this is an acidic base because if you think about it, um, this salt is going to turn into your ammonium ion and your chloride ion. This is your anion because it is the negatively charged ion from this ionic compound. It will actually come from an acidic, a strong acid. So in this case, it could be our HCl. And the cation are coming from a weak base. So um, this is the strong acid. I'm just going to write this down. And this can come from um, ammonium hydroxide, for example. OK, and this is our, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yep, this can be our um, weak base. Um, and the reason why it will yield an acidic solution is because the cation, which is this one, can act as a weak acid and the anion will not react with um, anything else. It could, um, it will just hydrolyze um, with water, which means that it will form a complex kind of looking like this and with the water molecule kind of surrounding it like that. You would have, um, because the reason why it will orientate itself like that is because this side of the polar covalent molecule is slightly negative and that side is slightly positive. And you would have um, three on one side, another three on the other side, but we will not focus on um, that one now because we want to focus on what happens in here and in here. So the reason why this particular salt is going to yield an acidic solution is because this particular ion here will react with water. And when it reacts with water, it will then um, donate a hydrogen ion so the hydrogen over here is going to go into the water. However, if you're looking at the equilibrium, you can tell that the ammonium ion has turned into ammonia and the hydrogen has been um, accepted by the water, forming more hyd um, hydronium ions within the solution. And this is why the salt is going to yield an acidic pH. And um, we are not going to focus too much on um, questions within the acidic, basic and neutral salts because we're purely using this to help us in what indicator we will use in the titration. So let's move on to basic salts. When we're talking about basic salts, it will um, this salt will consist of an anion of a weak acid and a cation of a strong base. Um, and if you're looking at acidic, um, sorry, sodium acetate, as an example, the reason why it will yield a basic solution is because when the acetate ion um, react with water, it will um, become acetate straight away. But as a result, what happens is after it's taken the proton from the water, so the um, water is going to donate a proton to the acetate, and you would have hydroxide, um, more hydroxide ions forming as a result. And very importantly, you need to know that this is an equilibrium. It's not a um, complete um, dissociation reaction. So first of all, what happens is um, the ion is going to um, dissociate into separate ions, and then um, the acetate ion will hydrate as a result of that. The easier one would be your neutral salt, B2, 
because they are consist of an anion from a strong acid. Um, the strong acid that I'm using today would be our hydrochloric acid and the cation of a strong base. This can be my strong base. And when you add the two together, what you will get is a complete um, reaction when or remember your states will be in an aqueous solution and you get water as one of your um, product as well. Oops, this is an L by the way. And because this is a complete dissociation, you will not, these guys will not react with water and form any, and, and be contributing to the concentration of hydronium ion within the solution. So this is why when you're reacting a strong acid and a strong base, you will obviously get a neutral salt and you will also use um, your bromothymol blue as an indicator if um, you are doing a titration like that. Okay, and um, these are some of the examples that you will come across with, um, with your um, school. The most common um, ones are obviously your um, salts for your neutral range, but this will be different depending on the price of carbon dioxide because that would make the whole solution slightly more acidic as a result. Um, so that's why it's got the A over here. The rest should be as expected. Okay, um, I'm going to focus more on titration techniques since our um, webinar is mainly on titration. So there are some terms that you have to um, remember. The first thing when we are doing a titration is we need to prepare a primary standard um, so that you will um, have a standardized, standardized solution to find the concentration of an unknown. Um, so in order for you to prepare a primary standard in your lab, you will um, use a um, scale. So this is a scale, usually an electronic scale that's up to, that can measure up to, let's see, two and preferably three decimal places depending on your lab at the school. And you'll be um, preparing a primary standard using um, some pallets. Um, those um, oh, pallets of maybe acetic acid, um, potassium hydrogen thylate, or you, you can have um, sodium carbonate as your primary standard as well. The reason why we chose one of these um, molecules or these substances as our primary standard is because it's not hydroscopic which means that it does not absorb water from the environment. Because if it absorbs water from the environment, what happens is the molecular weight of your um, substance will actually increase. And we don't want that because that will then affect our concentration when you are making um, up your solution in your volumetric flask. It will not be accurate. It has to be soluble and highly soluble as well, because if it doesn't dissolve, then it will also affect the concentration of your um, primary. It's be very pure, um, which comes from the hydroscopicity of your molecule. Because if it's not pure and has other substrates or substances in there, you will not um, get an accurate titration at the end. Um, it also needs to have high molecular weight because um, it will reduce error when you're weighing. So for example, if um, my oxalic acid is um, 0.137 grams, for example, it is okay because each molecule has a high molecular weight in comparison to if I have a smaller molecule um, than each one of these, if I put a bit too much on, then the discrepancy is going to be a lot higher. Are there any questions so far? No? Okay, so next thing, we are going to talk about our um, how to 
do a primary standard. So first, first of all, you need to actually weigh a um, amount of solid in a clean and dry beaker. If you're using um, a watch glass, that's completely fine as well, as long as you transfer all of the um, substances into your volumetric flask. This is my really bad drawn volumetric flask. Um, and you would have to wash it down with distilled water. So, well, you'll have to put it in there and wash everything with distilled water. Into your volumetric flask. Now, very importantly, the volumetric flask has to be clean and dry to begin with. And can someone tell me why this particular device has to be clean and dry? Hello there, is everyone, can everyone hear me? <laughs> no purity, excellent because you don't want any other substances to be in there. So in your school, the lab technician would usually put this in a um, dishwasher or industrial dishwasher to make sure everything is dried and um, you, you can't actually dry it manually yourself either. So um, this is very, very important. And when you're feeling in your solution, I would usually tell my students to stop um, pouring in the solution once it's here and actually use a pipette to fill it to the neck. So if this is the neck, I'm just going to draw the neck really, whoops, around here again. The meniscus has to be just touching the line. And if you overshoot it, you'll have to redo the um, whole primary standard again because um, the calibre of the um, glassware is um, fairly high and also if you overshoot it, it will mean that the concentration that you have made up will be, unclean, will, will be um, slightly more than what it should be and your titration will not be accurate. So clean and dry is very important if you are to asked to write a procedure about how to um, prepare a primary standard. You need to add distilled water to the volumetric flask for a fixed volume. And then um, after you finish that, you need to invert the volumetric flask, obviously put a stopper on it. You need to invert that volumetric flask about three times to complete mix it. While you are, um, why your distilled water is filled to that level, usually what I would do is I would um, make sure that the mixing is done at this stage so that when you fill the water to the neck of the volumetric flask, it will not contribute to extra volume if these are not completely dissolved. So you need to make sure you're very precise and clear um, when you are writing your method in your um, half yearlies. Okay. So standard solution, after you've made up your um, primary standard, um, you will have your primary standard over in a fixed volumetric flask. And what you would do is you will need to um, use a standardized solution to make sure um, you will know how much of that standardized solution is needed to titrate with your primary standard. And some of the suitable solutions are your sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, and sulfuric acid. I'm going to go into a bit more detail with standard solutions in our questions. So um, we, I'll focus more on that then. Um, before we go into questions, there are some titration equipments that I would like you to be familiarised with. So this is your retort stand with your burette clamp. Um, the thing that you have in your lab may have a little opening over here that's clearly our burette with a stopper. This is a volumetric pipette. It's very different to the plastic ones that you used um, when you are testing acidic basic and neutral salts on a um, dimple dish. This is what we call the um, pipette pump. Some of you will have a device that look like this in your lab and it works the same way. Whoops, this little stopper is a little bit too, too big. You will need a volumetric flask, funnel, 
the paper, what do you think the paper is there for? Hello. Yay, to see the color change. Thank you, Bianca and Erica. That is correct. And um, we will use um, water bottle as well to make sure that if you have some residues around the conical flask, you can actually um, wash it to make sure that all of your um, standardized solution has been reacted with your primary standard in such case. Um, there are two words that you may not have come across with and they are your um, titrant and your analyte. So I'm going to go through those two terms now and um, obviously you need to use the indicator um, because that will be contributing to your color change. Without your indicator you cannot um, perform your titration because the solution is simply not going to change color. Okay, so um, titration basic steps. You obviously need to prepare a primary standard um, in your volumetric flask, and then you will use the primary standard to standardize the standard solution. And you need to titrate it with um, repeats as well. So usually how it works is once you have um, done your primary standard in a volumetric flask, I'm just going to show you what that is, you will then use a volumetric pipette to pipette a certain volume and transfer it into a conical flask. Okay, so these, this is going to be your primary standard. Whoops. Um, and you will then, sorry, I'm trying to draw a burette. Here we go, it's in there. And you will add your um, standard. Whoops. Standard solution in there to see how much of your standardized solution or standard solution will be needed to um, completely um, titrate your primary standard. Um, the first one will be your rough titration and the rest would be your um, real titration. And you need to make sure all of the volumes are between 0 0.1 milliliter for um, accuracy. You will then, um, when you're filling in your burette, by the way, so this is your burette, um, usually you can start at zero. But... If you start at say 45 milliliters, as long as you write that in your prac book, then you can always um, work out the difference of your volume to calculate the exact volume that you have used. So um, you don't really need to put um, your um, solution in your burette to the zero at all times. Okay. Now you need to place your standard solution in the conical flask, use the pipette of known volume, then um, place suitable indicator into the conical flask, repeat the titration until full titration have within 0 0.1 milliliter difference. And then you need to discard, um, discard any of the outliers, record all of the volumes in a table, and there you go, you've got your um, titration. The vocabularies that you need to um, remind yourself is equivalence point. That is the point where your solution has a change in color. Um, you can sometimes call it endpoint, and that is when the acid and the base has um, reached equal molarity, equal molar. And that is very important. It's not like, oh, it has been neutralized. Um, it doesn't necessarily um, will neutralize to seven, depending on whether you're reacting a strong base with a weak acid or vice versa. So it's very important that you, you use the correct terminologies when describing a titration. Your titrant is your standard solution and your um, analyte is the substance being determined. Your analyte is usually the unknown, so it could be a um, lemonade that you want to find the concentration of the acid, the citric acid in your lemonade. Aliquot is a sample or a portion of a known, or sorry, of an unknown amount of liquid. So your aliquot would be what you collect with your volumetric pipette. Okay, are there any questions so far?
Hello there. Can everyone, are, is everyone still watching? <laughs> Doesn't seem like we've got a lot of interaction happening at the moment. Yes, thank you, Victoria. All good, thanks, Bianca. Please interact with me, otherwise it's going to be a very boring webinar. Come on, guys, wake up, stand up, shake your hands a little bit, and then sit down. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, let us go to the titration setup. Um, this should be very familiarized um, for all of you at the moment. You've got your retour stand with your burette clamped with a, um, hang on, I've got a question. It says standard that solution, solution that is not the primary standard. No, standard solution is not the same as the primary standard. The primary standard is prepared for you to titrate against the standard solution. Then you use the standard solution to titrate with an unknown so you can tell what the concentration of the unknown is. So these two terminologies need to be clear when we are doing a titration question. Is that better, Bianca? Okay, so I'm gonna repeat that again. The primary standard is what you make up to titrate, well, to make sure that you can um, find out what the concentration of the standard solution is. So once you figure out the concentration of your standard solution, you then can use um, the standard solution to find the unknown. But without the standard solution, um, you can't find the um, concentration of the unknown. It's, no, 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 it's not the standard solution. It's not the unknown. Well, you find out the concentration of the standardized solution um, by titrating it against a primary standard. Um, when I do a um, question, you will know what I mean, Bianca, okay? So when I am um, working through the titration questions with you, I will go through this in more detail. Okay, so um, I might just move on because otherwise we may not finish this webinar. Thank you. Okay, um, so there are four different types of titrations that we are going to do today and I need you to prepare yourself with some pens, um, pencils, um, calculator, etc. So the first one we're going to do a straightforward titration. Then we are going to um, do a titration question with uh, whoops, um, a diprotic or a triprotic acid. I think I put in a triprotic acid. Whoops, let me just write triprotic. Um, the difference between um, monoprotic, diprotic, and triprotic is that for monoprotic, for instance, your HCl, um, the hydrochloric acid will only um, be able to donate one proton. And that's why we call this a monoprotic proton. When we're looking at sulfuric acid, you can tell that it's got two. Um, it's, it can actually um, provide two protons when it dissociates in water, and that is the reason why we call this a diprotic. Um, your citric acid, citric acid, is a triprotic um, acid, and we are going to um, focus a little bit on that today when we are doing our questions. The third one, we're going to do titration where dilution of the standard occurs. Um, so you will need to um, remember your formula of C1V1 is equal to C2V2. And last but not the least, we're going to do a back titration question. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. We've got a titration um, carried out using 0.246 molar um, hydrochloric acid. Um, I usually write M for concentrate um, for molar. M is essentially mole per liter. Okay. Um, so this 
um, titration was carried out by using a acid to standardize 25.0 aliquot of a solution of the weak base, sodium carbonate. An appropriate indicator was chosen to show the end point of this neutralization. The result gain are shown as the table below. Um, the question says, calculate the concentration of the sodium carbonate solution and justify the steps in your calculation. Now I'm going to um, give you um, a couple of minutes to work on this on your own, and then I'm going to go through this um, step by step. In this case, Bianca, we are not using the these values to find an unknown substance. So this is purely just standardizing um, or finding out the um, concentration of your aliquot, which is your base. So I'm going to start this question in a minute. And if you have any questions between now and then, just let me know. Okay, would you like me to go through it now? Please say yes in the comment box and then I'll start. Okay, got one, two, three. Okay, four. Thank you, ladies. Let's start. Okay, so if you're looking at this question, you need to first of all um, remember that um, a titration was carried out using this to standardize that. Um, the weak base in this case would be what um, we make up. So we can actually, so this is actually our primary standard. Um, and the titration was carrying out using the acid to standardize that. So which means that this is our standard so, um, solution. And I'm gonna draw out what I mean by that. When we prepared um, primary standard, we are making a known volume in a volumetric flask. And then what happens is we have collected this is a really dodgy volumetric um, pipette, but we have um, collected 25 mils of this and transferred it into a conical flask, okay? So um, this is where the weak base is. This is my sodium carbonate. And what I have done is I have, oh, you get the idea. This is your burette. I have, um, I'm titrating this primary with my standard solution and my standard solution is my HCl. 
oh, whoops, HCl. Um, and when we are, we need to first of all find out the amount of HCl that we have used by calculating each one of the volumes used within these five trials. So the first one is our rough one. So the first one, um, if you minus um, the initial volume by the final volume, you should get 23 milliliter. The second one is 22.3. The third one should be 22.3 as well. Fourth, 22.7. And the fifth titration is 22.2. Now, which one of these um, volumes should I discard, or two of these, I should say? One and four, perfect. So because these... Um, two values are not within 0 0.1 millilitres of range. So this one, the first one, is obviously one that I am going to discard because um, it's our rough titration. I'm not also, um, sorry, isn't this 22 for the second one? Yes, it is, sorry. Thank you. Thanks for the pickup. Um, and with... The third one um, and the second, third and the fifth are within range. So therefore, we are not going to discard all of them. Okay, let's find out the average. The average volume for your acid, volume average for the acid will be equal to 22.2 plus 22.2 um, plus whoops, 22. 0.3 divided by 3. Let me get my calculator. So, and you should get, you should get 22.23 milliliter as your average volume. Then, when in doubt, always write an equation. So these two um, reactants are our hydrochloric acid, which is um, this one over here. Remember to write your state because if you don't write your um, state in an exam, you will not get full marks. This is my sodium carbonate. When you have an acid carbonate reaction, you get three um, products. The first one is your salt, and it's also going to be in your aqueous solution as well. And you will also get your water in liquid and your carbon dioxide. In this case, it would be some of them is going to be in gas, some of them is going to be in aqueous, depending on the state of your um, reaction. And then we need to balance it. So we have, um, let's have a look, two sodium over here. So we need to balance that with two sodium within our salt. And therefore, I need to make sure that I balance the number of moles for your um, hydrochloric acid as well. Um, then what I usually do is I write concentration, mole and volume on this high so I can tally up what I need to find. I need to find a concentration of the sodium carbonate. So this is my N gold. But let's actually fill in all of the information that I have first. So my concentration for the hydrochloric acid is 0 0.246 molar. Um, I know that I have used um, 0 point, 0 0.022223. Um, liters, always convert everything into liters when you're filling in the table, then I can actually find out the number of moles for my hydrochloric acid. If you remember your formula, concentration is equal to um, mole divided by volume. So therefore, my number of moles is equal to C times V. So let's see what you get. 0 0.246 times 0 0.02223 is going to be equal to 5.46 um, times 10 to the power of negative 3. I will not round this number off right now, and I will just leave this number in the calculator because that would um, 
change the final concentration at the end if your round is off. You can, however, write the roundup version in your table, but I wouldn't actually cancel it in the calculator. You would have to round off your final answer, um, which is going to be the concentration of the sodium carbonate to the least number of significant figures given by the data. So for instance, I've got three significant figures for our concentration, and I've also got three significant figures for my aliquot. Um, therefore, my um, final answer will have to be in three significant figures as well. Anyway, um, so I know that um, the number of moles for my hydrochloric acid is this. I know this is a two to one ratio. So therefore, the number of moles for my sodium carbonate will be half, which means that my um, moles for sodium carbonate would be 2.73429 times 10 to the power of negative three. Sorry about that squiggle. Um, I know my volume, my volume for my um, weak base is 25 mils, so it will be 0 0.025. Therefore, I can find out, find out the concentration. I'm just going to write it over here. Concentration for my Na2CO3 would be equal to 2.73429 times 10 to the power of negative 3 times 0 0.025. So you just basically leave that on your calculator, times it by 0 0.025, and you should get um, 6.8357 dot 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 times 10 to the power of negative five. Um, and to round it off to three significant figures, it would be 6.84 times 10 to the power of negative five um, mole per liter. I might just write a big M over here to make life a little bit easier. Um, yeah, sorry, you're right. I should put divide as well. I was thinking about mole. Sorry for the pickup. So I'm going to do it in board two. The pickup was concentration is N on V. So you should do the number of moles for your weak base divided by volume, which is 0 0.025, and you should get a different answer. So let me actually just fix that up. Thank you for that. So it should be um, 2.73429. So... 2.73429 divided by 0 0.025 and, and you should get the right answer. Okay. And should actually, let me just go through that times 10 to the power of negative three. Divided by 0 0.025, and you should get 0 0.109 moles per litre. Did everyone get that? Yeah, excellent. Good. Do you put your calculator in significant mode? That is fine, um, but um, if you leave it in this answer, that's completely fine as well. Um, the marker will not mark you down if you present this uh, as it is or um, um, write your answer in significant figures. It doesn't really matter. But for um, the next question, let's have a look. It says, Select the indicator that should be used for this titration and provide a reason for your choice. Now, if you look at um, this question, I know that HCl is a strong acid. And I know that carbonate, sodium carbonate is a weak base. So therefore, I know that the um, salt that I will have is going to be a um, acidic salt. 
and therefore methyl orange will be the indicator of my interest because looking back at the methyl orange range we know it is between 3.1 to 4.4 so this indicator is going to change color um, within the range of um, interest so this is going to be the answer did everyone get that right Excellent. Very good. Now let's try a harder question now. This question, let me just go back here, um, is another titration question. We've got a sodium hydroxide solution and it's titrated against um, citric acid. Now citric acid, if you have to remember the structural um, formula for citric acid and you need to also um, draw shown where the double bond is because um, it is quite important because it is the COOH um, bit that actually donates the um, proton. So I'm going to just draw the um, structure for the citric acid to remind you what it looks like. This is a H, C, it's got three C's in the middle. Make sure you show all of the bonds. Sorry, this is that. You've got a double bond, O and a OH. Another, this is where People sometimes get confused. Sometimes they just write OH. And I would try to avoid to write COOH. Um, if you write that, that is not completely showing the structural formula. So make sure you draw that in an exam. Okay. Okay. It is triprotic because it can donate up to three protons, as you can see over here. This is the first one, second, and the third. And um, we have sodium hydroxide titrating against that. The solution, sorry, the sodium hydroxide solution was titrated against 25 mils of a 0.1 molar acidic acid, and the average volume used was 41.5. Um, milliliter. Calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. Um, the first thing that you have to do is you need to write the um, formula for this titration. We have your, we have the sodium hydroxide and because it is triprotic, um, we need to remember what kind of salt it will yield as well. So let me write the formula for your citric acid and it will form a salt, which is Na3C6H5O7 plus H C um, H H two O. Make sure you write your states as well, and make sure you balance it. So we would have three water molecules on this side, and therefore three sodium hydroxide on this end. Um, the reason why um, this is um, Na3 is because it's potential to donate three ions, okay? So let us do the um, table again. So again, we need to find the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. So this is our N gold we will need to find information for the rest in order for us to find that. So let's have a look. We know that um, the concentration of the sample citric acid is 0 0.100 molar. This is going to be my mole per litre. And um, I have used 25 mils of that, which is 0 0.025. So C is equal to N on V which means that N is going to be equal to C times V and your answer for this one should be 0 0.0025. Did everyone get that right? Good. 
Very good. Now, if you look at the um, molar ratio of the sodium, hydro I'm sorry, sodium hydroxide and your citric acid, I know that this is a three to one ratio, which means that the um, number of moles for sodium hydroxide in order for it to reach equivalence point to the citric acid has to be three times less than 0 0.025, which means I need to divide this number by three. So 0 0.025 divided by three, Oh, sorry, you need to times it by three. My apology, because this is a three to one, one, um, which means that three moles of sodium hydroxide is going to react with one of these. So you need to times this value by three, my apologies. So you should get 0 0.0075. Now, did I know the volume? Yes, I do, because the volume is um, over here stated and you need to convert that into liters, which is 0 0.0415. Then I will divide um, the number of moles by the volume to get the concentration, which I will get um, 0 0.0, 0 0.01807 moles per liter. Did we get that right as well? Excellent. Good. Now, um, what I'm going to do is, let me have a look. Let's um, have a look at this particular question. This one's slightly uh, more heavily worded. So I'm going to dissect this question with all of you. So it says the manufacturer makes orange cordial by flavoring sugar and acetic acid. Um, the concentration um, of the acetic acid is determined by the titration with um, sodium hydroxide. Then the sodium hydroxide um, is prepared by dissolving four grams of sodium hydroxide pellet in water to give one liter of solution. The solution is standardized by titrating 25 mils of a 0 0.1011 molar standardized solution of hydrochloric acid with the average titration volume as 24.1 milliliter. In order for us to analyze the um, cordial, um, we have a dilution happening. So this is one of the um, examples where a titration is involved with a unknown solution which has been diluted um, from five, 50 milliliter to 500 milliliter. And then 25 mils of the aliquot is titrated against another, sorry, titrated against the standard solution, which is your sodium hydroxide. And phenolphthalein is the um, indicator that we have used in this, um, in this titration. We've got the volume for um, the sodium hydroxide, so, and then we need to calculate the concentration of the standardized NaOH solution and explain why it is different to the concentration calculated using the mass given, assuming no human error has occurred. Now, this is a bit um, crazy in terms of the wording, but can you see how we've got the primary standard, we've got our um, standardized solution, and then we've got an unknown. So first of all, um, we know that our sodium hydroxide over here is our primary. And we have a standardized solution. So this is our standardized solution. Standard solution. And then um, we would use what we have stand we we will use the standardized um, sodium um, sodium hydroxide to find the unknown a lot of steps but very importantly if you look at sodium hydroxide it is um, a hydroscopic substance um, so you will find that this particular substance will um, absorb h2o in the from the air from the surrounding and environment into the solution so that's why you will get the difference however we still need to calculate um, the difference 
So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to work on that and then I'll give you the um, solution afterwards. All right, due to time, I may actually start working this problem with you. My apologies if you're still working on it. But first of all, we have to um, find out the concentration of your um, sodium hydroxide. I'm just going to write it here. So the concentration of my sodium hydroxide is equal to the number of moles divided by volume. Um, you can find um, the number of moles um, over here because the number of moles for the sodium hydroxide you actually need your periodic table for this but I can I'm just going to write it on top of the page so the number of moles for your sodium hydroxide is equal to mass divided by molar mass I know that the mass for our sodium hydroxide is 4.000. So I need to divide that by the molar mass for sodium, which is 22.99. You have to use the values of your periodic table for that because that is in four significant figures. Don't use any random periodic tables on the internet because that will give you a different um, volume as well. Not volume, so a different um, mass value because in university they actually use up to five significant figures for molar mass. Okay, so 16.00, I'm just going to write 16 for this case for the oxygen and 1.008. And the number of moles um, is 0 0.099825, which means that my um, Volume, sorry, my um, concentration for the, our primary standard is equal to the value that I got from the top. Do not round it off this, at this stage. Divided by my um, volume, which is my one litre solution. So this is going to be the concentration. If you think about this, this is all in four significant figures. So I need to make sure that this is going to be um, expressed in four significant figures as well. So that would be 0 0.100 mole per litre. So I've got a question over here. Oh, you've got a different number of moles. You will get a different amount of moles because I am comparing this number of moles with another one. OK, and I'm going to show you why that is the case as well. So um, I'm comparing what I made for the primary standard with what actually um, what's going to be my um, concentration after my titration as well. I'm going to show it to you now, Tina. So just be a bit patient. So this is the primary standard um, concentration that I find. I'm going to use this space over here to um, find out um, what I have as my experimental value. So I have, I'm just going to write the equation now because I have um, standardized the sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid. Okay, so does this primary standard, so this is what I expect and this is my experimental value. This is my experimental value. I will get NaCl plus water. I know um, the number of moles for my, um, sorry, the, so not, not number of moles. I know that the concentration for my hydrochloric acid is, just gonna write this down. My concentration for my hydrochloric acid is 0 0.1011 molar. 
And um, the volume that I have used is 24 point, sorry, 0 0.02410 liter. So the number of moles for this is 2.4365 times 10 to the power of negative three. I know that this is one-to-one -one ratio, so the number of moles for the sodium hydroxide should be exactly the same. Um, and I have used 0 0.025 um, milliliter of the primary solution to um, titrate against the um, hydrochloric acid, so I can actually find out my um, sodium hydroxide concentration in my experimental value. And I should get 0 0.09746 if you sub in the variables to find a concentration. As you can tell, what we expect is not what we got experimental value and the reason for that is because sodium hydroxide absorbed some um, atmospheric um, moisture or some water from the air so this is why sodium hydroxide is not a good primary standard okay are there any questions? Tina, does that answer your question? Awesome. And is everyone else following? Please give me some feedback on this. Excellent. All right, so let's move on to the next question. Let me close this. So for this one, we also need to determine the concentration of citric acid in, um, this should be orange, not lemon, because we started with orange, we can't end up with lemon. Um, so we will need to um, find out the concentration of the um, citric acid in the orange cordial. Um, in order for us to analyze that, Hang on, I've got a question. Why would they put vino when titrating a strong acid in a strong base? I will um, answer that um, question after I figured out um, the answer for question 3B. Is that okay, Erica? Thank you. All right, let's move on. So, um, in order for us to determine the um, concentration of the unknown, um, we will need to know what happened. So to analyze the orange cordial, we know that um, 50 milliliters of the cordial is diluted to 500. And then 25 mils of the aliquot, or what we call the diluted solution, is titrated against the um, sodium um, hydroxide solution. Now, Erica, the reason why we use um, phenolphthalein is because um, we are using the, the cordial, which is the citric acid here, is a weak, ac um, it's a weak acid. And we are titrating it against the um, sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. Therefore, you will get a basic salt, and that's why we would use phenol. However, you wouldn't use um, you would not use phenol for your first um, titration with the standard solution with the primary standard. If that makes sense. Awesome. Okay. So in order for us to do that, um, we have to um, figure out what is going on in here. So I would write my um, equation again with my strong base, which is my sodium hydroxide. I am titrating it against um, the citric acid. Whoops, that should be six, C6. 
H8 O7, and that would be my aqueous. And I will get Na3 C6 H5 O7, that's a 7, aqueous plus my water, that's a, that's a 2, liquid, that's balanced this, 3 and 3. Now this is balanced. Now I would have my concentration, mole and volume on this side. Let's have a look at what we have here. So with our um, average volume of my um, sodium hydroxide, I will not use the first one because this is clearly an outlier. Everything else is within 0 0.1 milliliter of the um, range. So I can use these three value. In order for me to um, work it out, you just add them together and divide it by three. So my volume for sodium hydroxide is 0 0.0. 2725. The concentration um, I have worked out from my previous um, slide, if you go to the previous slide, is actually going to be 0. Um, 0 0.09746. So I'm just going to sub this value in. So 0 0.09746. Um, and therefore, I can figure out the number of moles by doing, um, whoops, n is equal to CV. So I'll have to times these two um, values together to get my number of moles, which is 0. Point, sorry, not zero, I'll just write it as a significant figure, 2.656 um, times 10 to the power of negative 3. And since this is a 3 to 1 ratio, um, molar ratio with the sodium hydroxide and my citric acid, I have to divide this value by 3 in order for me to find out the number of moles for the citric acid. And you should get 8.853 times 10 to the power of negative 4 as your answer for the number of moles for the citric acid. I know the citric acid's um, volume is 25 milliliter. This is going to be the volume I use because this is the actual volume I use in the titration. Let's sub that in. Um, this is 0.025 and then I can figure out the concentration of the diluted citric acid which is going to be my 8.853 times 10 to the power of negative 4 um, divided by volume 0 0.025. And you should get 8 moles per litre. Did we get that? Where's my slide? Yep. Is everyone following what I've done there? Excellent. Let's move on. Um, then you need to remember our um, dilution formula, which is C1V1 is equal to C2V. Two, um, I know that the goal is to find out the concentration of the citric acid. Um, I have my volume for the undiluted solution and I have the um, concentration for my diluted volume and the diluted volume as well. If you don't remember what they are, we know that my V1 is equal to 50 milliliter my V2 is equal to 500 milliliter and my C2 is actually um, at the bottom. So C below, um, I might as well just write this down. So 0 0.0354. Um, so if you rearrange everything, C1 is equal to C2 V2 divided by V1 and you should get 0, 0.0. 
sorry, not 0 0.0, you should get 0 0.354 moles per litre for the original um, lemonade cordial concentration. Are there any questions for this? Did, um, did you get this answer? Shout yes if you get the answer, please. Excellent. Good work, ladies. Now, which brings us to um, the end of the webinar. I know that I have another question um, to go. <laughs> um, I'm happy to work through it, or I'm happy for this session to be um, question and answers. So would you like me to work through the last question to end the webinar, or would you like to ask me some questions with what we have discussed today? Working through it? Got one for working through it. Continue with question four. Two, three. Okay, I might work through it. So for the fourth question, it's quite a common question actually. Um, we've got a solution of the hydrochloric acid was standardized by titrating again um, sodium carbonate using the following procedure. It says all glassware was rinsed correctly to remove any contaminants. Hydrochloric acid was placed in a burette and 25 mils of the sodium carbonate solution was prepared into the conical flask. The titration was performed and the hydrochloric acid was found to be 0 0.200 mole per liter, identified in substance used to rinse the conical flask. What do we use to rinse the conical flask in a titration, ladies? And gentlemen, water. Distilled water would be the correct answer. You must um, write distilled water because when we write water, we don't know whether you're specifying um, tap water or any um, other water that you may use. So you need to write distilled water to get the um, to get the maximum marks. Now, uh, and then we have a question with eggshells. Now, sometimes they would use seashell or eggshell that anything that has calcium carbonate in it. Um, in this case, we've got eggshells and it contains a mixture of carbonate compounds. Um, we've got a standardized um, hydrochloric acid um, used to determine the percentage by mass of carbonate in the seashell. So we're only interested in the carbonate. We're not interested in what the um, metal cation is within the carbonate. Um, we have 0 0.145 grams sample of the eggshell and I'm going to draw out what goes on here. So we've got an eggshell and it's obviously being crushed and um, weighed and um, this should not be levitating, but you get the idea. And we've got 0 0.145 grams of the eggshell and it's been transferred into a um, conical flask. So that goes in there. And we um, added 50 mils of the hydrochloric acid in there. Okay, so we have a carbonate and acid reaction to begin with. And then at the completion of the reaction, the mixture in the conical flask was titrated against 0 0.25 molar. This again is mole per litre of sodium hydroxide. Um, interestingly, when we added the acid, we are assuming that there would be some excess acid in the conical flask after it's completely reacted with the um, unknown amount of carbonate solution. So this is an example of a back titration question. Very common in trials, half yearlies and HSC. And we need to calculate the percentage by mass of the carbonate. So we have a lot of work here. Um, if you can imagine a burette um, on top of this conical flask and we literally um, titrating it against a um, base, which is our sodium hydroxide. So let's work through this. Um, in order for us to figure out um, what um, each step is, you need to be very clear about what's going on. So we've got the first um, neutralization and then the second neutralization involves with the 
um, excess HCl with uh, with um, NaOH. Okay, so first of all, I need to figure out how much um, excess HCl I have. So the first thing that I need to do is that. Let's figure that out. Um, I know that the molar ratio for the sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid is one to one. Um, NaCl plus water. Um, and I know what they are as well. So this is going to be the volume of my um, titrate. Let's have a look. So I'm going to write mole volume concentration over here. I know that the volume for my um, sodium hydroxide is 0 0.0295. Um, the concentration is 0 0.250, 0 0.250. So I know that the number of moles I have used is 7.375 times 10 to the power of negative three um, by using this value times by that value. And because the, so, um, the base and the acid are in the same molar ratio, the number of moles for my hydrochloric acid would be the same. So I know that I have this amount of acid um, in excess. So this is my excess amount. I forgot to put in a very important value. The um, standardized hydrochloric acid solution is um, two molar. Anyway, let's have a look at the original um, concentration. So we've got the excess, the original um, amount of HCl that we have used is equal, we need to find the number of moles for that first is equal to C times V and I've just added that value in because I forgot to include it in the question this is going to be 2 um, actually is it 2? 0 0.2 molar sorry it's 0 0.2 molar times the volume that I have used and in this case, we have used 50 um, milliliter. So it would be 0 0.0500. 0, 0. And I know that I should have 0 0.01 um, moles in my original. Um, HCL solution, which means that the used, this should be a U, used HCL should be equal to 0 0.01 minus 7.375 times 10 to the power of negative three, which is equal to two point six two five times ten to the power of negative three moles so essentially what it means is this amount of hydrochloric acid has been reacted with all of your eggshells in step one okay is everyone following cool um, because of space limitation, I'm going to use the different board um, to finish off the question, okay? So I'm going to go to board two. Well, maybe not board two. I'm going to go to board three, um, whiteboard. I'm going to go to board three. So I know that the used HCl is equal to 2.625 times 10 to the power of 3 moles. Now, <clears throat> very importantly, you need to um, ensure you know how to write the equation for the carbonate 
to react with the hydrochloric acid. So I'm just going to write the um, ion in this case. The reason why I only include the ion is because the metal cation is not involved in any, um, in, it's not take, taken part in any of the steps within this titration. So I'm just going to leave that alone since it is the impurity anyway. I know that I will get water. I'll also get CO2 as a gas, and I would also get um, chloride as a result in this case, okay? Because the chloride actually comes from the dissociation of the hydrochloric acid. Um, balance this, and I know that the molar ratio between the acid and the carbonate is 2 to 1. So therefore, the number of moles for the carbonate ions would be equal to 2.625 times 10 to the power of negative 3 divided by 2, and I would get 1.3125 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So the mass is equal to, if you don't remember the formula, mole is equal to mass over molar mass. So my mass whoops, is equal to mole times the molar mass of the carbonate. This is only for the carbonate, um, which is very important. Um, the molar mass of carbonate, if you look at in your periodic table, is 60.01. It's essentially 3 times 16 plus 12.01. Okay, so it would be, um, if you want to look at mass, it's just these two numbers together. The number of moles is 1.3125 times 10 to the power of negative 3, and I have to times it by the molar mass of my carbonate, and I should get 0 0.078769. Note, do not round off at the moment, even though that you uh, may be very tempted to. And the reason why is because we need to find a percentage of mass um, within the original eggshell, and that would be 0 0.078769 divided by the original sample, which is 0 0.145, and you need to times it by 100%, or sorry, by 100, not percent, just times it by 100, and you should get 54.3%. Did we get that? Excellent. Now we've got, um, about 20 minutes for um, questions, and I'm happy for um, anyone to be asking questions for now. Um, make sure when you're answering this um, last question, it has to be in the same significant figure um, with, yeah, I'll go back to the previous slide with the um, question here as well. So if you can tell, it's, um, all of the answers are given to us in three significant figures. So my answer would have to be in three significant figure as well.